capital punishment in South Africa was abolished on the 6th of June 1995 by the ruling of the Constitutional Court in the case of S versus Maquanyan. Following a five-year and four-month moratorium since February 1990, S versus Maquanyan was a landmark 1995 judgment of the Constitutional Court of South Africa. It established that capital punishment was inconsistent with the commitment to human rights expressed in the interim constitution. The court's ruling invalidated Section 277 of the Criminal Procedure Act 51 of 1977, which had provided for use of the death penalty along with any similar provisions in any other law in force in South Africa. The court also forbade the government from carrying out the death sentence on any prisoners awaiting execution, ruling that they should remain in prison until new sentences were imposed. Delivered on the 6th of June, this was the newly established court's first politically important and publicly controversial holding. In South Africa, the standard method for carrying out executions was hanging, sometimes of several convicts at the same time. Mandatory death penalty for murder was abolished in 1935, comparable to the similar act passed in the United Kingdom in 1957. Before this reform, Vast numbers of delinquents were sentenced to death without having their sentences carried out. With only 24% of capital verdicts being carried out in the period 1925 to 1935. Apartheid was a system of institutionalized racial segregation that existed in South Africa and Southwest Africa from 1948 until the early 1990s. Apartheid was characterized by an authoritarian political culture based on BOSCAP, which ensured that South Africa was dominated politically, socially, and economically by the nation's minority white population. According to this system of social stratification, white citizens had the highest status, followed by Asians and colors, then black Africans. The economic legacy and social effects of apartheid continue to the present day. Simon Fulmagoran, Jerry Masalali, and Marcus Motong, also known as the Moroka Three, Members of a guerrilla unit of Umkato we size. The Moroka three were sentenced to death for their involvement in attacks on two police stations that resulted in the death of four officers. The government denied requests to have the men considered prisoners of war under international law. Terrorists in the eyes of the white government and freedom fighters in the eyes of many blacks. The Moroka Three, Simon Filmagoran, Jerry Masalali and Marcus Motong, bore arms against as part of the ANC's military wing, Umkanto We Size. Their attacks in 1979 and 1981 had claimed the lives of four policemen. South African law until 1990 mandated hanging for a murder conviction without any extenuating circumstances, a fact associated with the crime which serves in the mind of reasonable men to diminish. Morally, albeit not legally, the degree of the prisoner's guilt. The courtroom adjunct to MK's guerrilla operations was establishing its position that its soldiers were prisoners of war under international law. And that that classification constituted an extenuating circumstance under South African law. 1977 protocols had extended the Geneva Convention's governing treatment of prisoners of war to explicitly cover anti-colonial and anti-racist insurgents. South Africa, unsurprisingly, did not ratify this amendment. 
the judge dismissed the argument that these protocols had acquired the binding force of customary international law. We do not need to waste time. A decade or so later, in the waning years of apartheid, this sort of argument would find a toehold. But not in a defiantly anti-terrorist Pretoria of the early 80s. On August 6, 1982, the Pretoria Supreme Court condemned to death three members of the African National Congress, Simon Fulmagoran, was 23, Jerry Samano Masalali, was 25, and Marcus Thabo Motong, was 27. The trial was based on a December 1981 incident in which five armed black men, alleged to have been members of an ANC military unit, attacked the South African police station at Wonderboom Mayville in Pretoria and one constable was killed and three others wounded. The main charge against all defendants was high treason under the Terrorism Act, deriving from their alleged involvement in a series of attacks against several police stations, a railway line, and an electrical center. During the trial, Misalali and McGoran said they had been tortured and forced to sign confession statements. Motong stated that he had been denied adequate medical treatment for a wound in the hip where he was shot during his arrest. Nevertheless, Supreme Court Judge D.J. Kerr Lewis ruled that their confessions had been made freely. The three were found guilty of high treason and 20 alternative charges. And they were sentenced to death. Instead of appealing their cases, the three men have directly petitioned South African State President Mayor Avril Joan for clemency. The ANC is seeking immediate international pressure so the regime will not proceed with their execution. People are asked to send cables to the South African State President and mailgrams to President Reagan calling on him to intervene. University presidents and faculty can also be asked to take action. The main point to make is that the defendant should have been accorded prisoner of war status under the Geneva Conventions, making them immune from criminal prosecution in this case. Simon Fulmagoran, Jerry Masalali and Marcus Motong were executed by hanging on June 9, 1983. The executions came less than three weeks after the most serious bombing South Africa has yet experienced, a car bomb explosion in Pretoria that killed 19 and injured nearly 200. The government's determination to move swiftly to make an example by way of the executions is indicated by the fact that it ignored the danger of provoking black anger only a week prior to June 16th, which has become a kind of martyr's day for the black nationalist cause. The date is the anniversary of the start of Soweto student rising seven years ago. In hanging the three men, the government also ignored a reported offer by the Seychelles, the Indian Ocean nation, to release four South Africans who are under a death sentence there for their roles in an abortive coup by South African-based mercenaries in 1981. The application to stay the executions went, in the normal South African practice, to the judge who sentenced them. Emerging from the judge's chamber after the applications had been rejected, Jack Unterhalter, their lawyer, said, We have done all we can. They will hang them in the morning. Their lawyer wanted their sentence to be changed to life imprisonment, instead they were hanged. Thank you for watching Death Row.